Liberal Viewer presents. So, welcome to the January 21st edition of Liberal Viewer Sunday Live Clip Roundup, delayed by ACLU business uh, yesterday to uh, an early Monday broadcast. Uh, but fortuitously, for the subject of tonight's broadcast, which is the Trump shutdown, we know a lot more about how the Trump shutdown is going to be ending and uh, or at least delayed for three weeks because of news developments this morning that I'll be able to incorporate in my commentary. I picked out the weekend's 17 best, most newsworthy clips for what should be a really educational, fair use, media criticism and uh, political analysis show for you all tonight. Uh, if you want to follow along with the 17 clips here, I put a link down in the video description to the clip list I use. You might be able to understand some of my notes. Uh, there will be political comedy, uh, both uh, Saturday Night Live and Real Time with Bill Maher. Real Time with Bill Maher's back for the first time uh, in 2018, or first time since, I think, November. Uh, so there's a mix, three clips from those two sources to start the political comedy, and then the real news clips, and I think we'll see even though there's been some changes in the news since the Sunday morning news analysis shows from the big five corporate outlets of ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and Fox News, the so-called corporate media here in the United States, uh, even though there's been these changes, you'll see I think what you're going to hear about in the next few weeks because I really concentrated on the immigration issues and that's the delay for three weeks in the government shutdown is going to be all about immigration and I think that's going to be a big topic barring, you know, the uh, disruptor in chief changing the subject. Uh, but like I said, I want to start off with uh, a clip from Saturday Night Live on Saturday night, of course, uh, with uh, guest host Jessica Chastain. And uh, she was in a kind of interesting uh, sketch that they did about how it's getting difficult to imagine anything that is going to stop Donald Trump from continuing to be president in such a way that. Uh, it, you know, they used to call uh, Ronald Reagan the Teflon president uh, because nothing seemed to affect his popularity. Of course, Donald Trump has much less popularity, but, you know, there was the whole uh, paying hush money to a porn star this week, which that was like, as many people said, like the fifth worst thing that happened. And so they did this sort of fake game show where they ended up breaking the fourth wall and uh, having Jessica Chastain actually be Jessica Chastain uh, dealing with her angst about this issue. Uh, you can see the full video at a link down in the video description, but uh, here is uh, the two minutes that I wanted to show you and talk with you about uh, in this clip. Doesn't even matter anymore. Fake news, fake news. Are you, are you okay? I'm great. <laughs> okay, you know what? On our final round, you guys just write down what you think would matter. What do you think would actually lead to any kind of consequences? Ten seconds on the clock. And while you're writing, I'm just gonna drink. <laughs> All right, what do you guys got? Um, I wrote, Trump punches Pope. I, I think that would be, like, really bad. Uh, you think so, but a lot of people still hate Catholics. Next. Um, okay, I wrote, uh, cancels Olympics because flags are, quote, gay. <laughs> are you kidding me? His approval ratings would jump five points. Next. Um, I wrote, sex tape with Don Jr. <laughs> I mean... That would check, like, a lot of boxes. You'd think so, but Fox News would just report it's he's a family man. <laughs> because nothing truly matters, none of it matters. Jessica? It's Veronica. Veronica Elders. Jessica, you don't have to do this. Yeah, Jessica, we know you're upset about the way our country's going, but you can't just, like, build a whole game show set and make us pretend to be contestants. Even, even though some of us relish the opportunity to become Bernard. I'm sorry, guys. I, it just seems like nothing matters anymore. Yeah, we got that from the name of the show and how you keep saying it over and over. 
but uh, it's going to be okay, Jessica. Yeah, there's another election in, in 2018, and Democrats have a real chance of taking back this. Oh, my God. You're right. You know, it doesn't matter. How does it not matter? <sighs> Um, now, that was actually probably the funniest sketch from Saturday Night Live on Saturday night. Uh, I didn't think the cold open was that great. Uh, th maybe they're suffering from a severe lack of Alec Baldwin as Donald Trump. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Kate McKinnon, actually, on Weekend Update, did this uh, pretty interesting turn as Robert Mueller, uh, but I didn't take clips from that because uh, it didn't fit my topic. But I did take a couple jokes from the video on YouTube that includes Kate McKinnon as Robert Mueller. You can go to the whole video, like I said, at a link down in the video description. These are the first couple jokes from uh, Colin Jost and the first couple jokes from Michael Che about the government shutdown. And uh, actually, I didn't think they were that funny, but I thought I would show them as a possible view of the uh, way that our culture is viewing the Trump shutdown. Uh, I actually thought that, you know, I put hashtag Trump shutdown in uh, the title of my video, but I think in some ways uh, the Democrats lost this round, or they, I don't know if they lost, but they caved. Uh, and so maybe it's not as bad as it looks like Saturday Night Live was trying to do its part to blame Trump for the shutdown uh, in the weekend update clips. You can see clip here you can see here. Well, congratulations to Donald Trump, who managed to keep our government open for almost one whole year. <laughs> the government shut down at midnight last night over disagreements regarding immigration. President Trump has blamed minority leader Chuck Schumer for the shutdown because Trump never misses a chance to blame a minority. <laughs> Also, why is shutting down our entire government even an option? America's been around for 240 years. Maybe it's time we just buy our government instead of leasing it month to month. <laughs> this is people's lives, not a Kia Sorento. <laughs> even production on House of Cards didn't shut down after the main guy was accused of being a full predator. If a fake government can keep going, so can we. <laughs> also, in that fake government, they got rid of the sexual predator president and got a female president instead. So just something to think about. Just an idea. Yeah, all I want to know is, since the government shut down, do we still have to pay taxes for the whole year? <laughs> do we get prorated or something like that? When my cable shut down, Comcast gave me free HBO for a month. I feel like the government owes us, like, an eagle or an apple pie or something. <laughs> huh. So, oh, and you saw at the end there, it ended with the whole, uh, stormy uh daniels porn star story i'm not going to show you those clips like i said down in the video description you can see the whole saturday night live weekend update that includes the stormy daniels jokes and also like i said the kate mckinnon as robert Mueller. i think i saw someone in the live viewer comment saying it was creepy robert Mueller, and i guess she did look kind of creepy as robert Mueller, but uh, it's hard to make up Kate McKinnon as Robert Mueller, but I guess she can do anybody on that show, or at least, as long as it's not blackface anyway. <laughs> but uh, before I get to the actual news clips, I wanted, uh, I wanted to show you uh, one brief clip from HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher last Friday, where actually this is when the government shutdown was just starting. They were actually taking the vote in the Senate right around the time uh, Real Time was going on live. And uh, Bill Maher did, I think you'll see these jokes are better than the Weekend Update jokes on the shutdown. And uh, it all comes back around to Stormy Daniels again uh, over in this clip. 2018 on the Chinese calendar is the year of the shithole. I don't know if you know that. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, you know, see, this is the thing about... Do well, look, I'm going crazy already. It's all first show. I've got to keep it... But this is the thing about Donald Trump. He just says shithole, everybody laughs at that, and it's a big thing. But actually, he changes real stuff, because that was the immigration deal they were trying to do, and saying shithole torpedoed it. And now they're going to cut down the government. We're waiting on that right now, live Friday night, because Donald Trump, you know, he wants to change the immigration process. He says, why can't we do immigration more like the way I got Melania, by using a catalog? <laughs> 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 He actually said that he said that we should bring in more people from Norway. And today, Norway uh, responded. They said, "Thank you, pass." <laughs> so, 
So now we have this government shutdown looming, and it is a stalemate because the Democrats are not budging on the dreamers, and the, the Trump is, is even more dead set about his stupid wall because his chief of staff, John Kelly, went on TV this week, oh, and he said Trump on the wall was uninformed <laughs> and evolving, and Trump was furious. He said, I am not uninformed, and who is this John Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> and what's evolution? But I'll, I'll tell you what evolution is. Trump, for two years, telling all his fans every time he got in front of them, it's going to be a giant concrete wall, an actual wall 30 feet high from coast to coast. No, no, it's, it's a fence. <laughs> or uh, sometimes a stream, or uh, a thin sprinkling of cinnamon like you do with ants, you know? <laughs> but <laughs> if there is a government shutdown, Trump says not to worry, porn stars will still get their hush money. So don't worry. <laughs> So that last uh, Bill Maher government shutdown joke about uh, Stormy Daniels was better than any of the jokes on the Saturday Night Live weekend update uh, and clip that I showed you, which were all the jokes about the shutdown from Saturday Night Live. Uh, and not only that, but I think that uh, Bill Maher's monologue gave you a much more detailed, granular look at uh, several of the issues involved in the shutdown about the wall and... Uh, about the comments that Donald Trump made. Uh, I guess Bill Maher has been gone for so long he had to talk about the shithole comments that I think kind of blew this whole thing up, which is one of the reasons I thought that Donald Trump might get blamed for this, because he really blew up the negotiations. But uh, like I said before I showed that clip, the, I think that uh, the Democrats have caved unless they're going to win in the next few weeks by um, separate Donald Trump or... And Republicans are going to have to make a decision as to whether they're going to placate the vast majority of Americans who want a compassionate uh, immigration system and also want not to deport and want to really give citizenship to at least the 800,000 DACA recipients and maybe a couple million dreamers who are kids who were brought here through no fault of their own uh, but have an undocumented status they have to be brought here before the age of 16 and more than like five or ten years ago and they have to be employed or in college or in the military and no criminal record that's the DACA recipients and so there uh, I think that something like 75 80 percent of Americans want those uh, the the so-called dreamers protected but then there are all these other issues and uh, whether who's gonna win on that we'll find out in the next few weeks but uh, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of real news clips now. Uh, first, starting with the news summaries from four of the five big corporate outlets. I'm going to show you NBC's Meet the Press first, then ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos, then uh, c some shorter clips from CNN State of the Union and Fox News Sunday. The first three, I think, were pretty even-handed as to whether this was the Trump shutdown or the Schumer shutdown or who was to blame. Uh, I think they... The Fox News cl uh, clip I'm going to show you, even though it's the supposedly straight news from Fox News Sunday, is much more biased against uh, Schumer and uh, the Democrats. But that's the last of the four news summaries I'm going to show you. Um, the first one I'm going to show is from NBC's Meet the Press. Uh, I thought it was the best of all the summaries. Uh, uh, you may have noticed ABC has won the last few weeks in terms of the best of the news summaries. Here's NBC winning this week, I think, over in this clip. Welcome to the one-year anniversary of the Trump presidency. Actually, it's day two of year two. Democrats are calling it the Trump shutdown. Republicans are calling it the Schumer shutdown. Whatever you want to call it, this is what happens when both sides think they are on the winning side of a political argument. Or as the Washington Post Dan Balls put it this morning, we are here because we have a deal-making chief executive who can't make a deal, a divided Republican Party struggling to govern, and a Democratic Party tethered to its anti-Trump progressive base. Democrats want a deal now to protect immigrants who were brought here illegally as children, the so-called dreamers. Republican leaders are opposed to putting any dreamer deal in a short-term spending bill. 
which could keep the government open now. All of this comes as the president uh, hits his one-year anniversary mark. And our brand-new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll shows President Trump's approval rating stands at 39%. That's the lowest ever at the end of a president's first year, 57% disapproving. Compare that to where the president was last February at the start of his administration. It was a little bit better, 44% approving, 48% disapproving. Because this president inspires such passion, we asked supporters and opponents to describe him in their own words. Here are the words supporters were most likely to use. Positive, good, excellent, doing what he said he would do. It's very different from the words used by opponents of this president. Embarrassing, disaster, chaotic, disappointing, and hasn't delivered. Changing the way Washington works was one of candidate Trump's signature campaign themes. But this weekend's shutdown shows that Washington is working, or not working, just as it always has. Negotiating with President Trump is like negotiating with Jell-O. One year to the day after President Trump took office, the federal government shut down, and the finger-pointing started. Good morning, and welcome to the Trump shutdown. This will be called the Trump shutdown. The Trump shutdown is all yours. Day one of the Senate Democrats government shutdown. What we're calling the Schumer shutdown. Schumer shutdown. Both parties face political risks. Ten Senate Democrats are on the ballot in states Mr. Trump won, and they depend on proving they can make government work. Four of those Democrats and new Alabama Senator Doug Jones voted to keep the government open. But for the first time in nearly 40 years, the government is shut down while one party controls both houses of Congress and the White House. And opponents are quoting citizen Trump back to President Trump. I actually think the president would be blamed. If there is a shutdown, I think it would be a tremendously negative mark on the president of the United States. The problems start from the top and they have to get solved from the top and the president's the leader. A year after Mr. Trump took the oath of office, promising to be a disruptor and a change agent. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. The president finds himself in a deep hole. 57% of Americans disapprove of the job he's doing. But it's the intensity of the disapproval that's so dramatic, with a majority of Americans strongly disapproving, including every age group except Americans 50 to 64. Mr. Trump promised to be the art of the deal president. I'm a deal maker. I believe that I can put both sides together. I will negotiate deals that nobody can negotiate like I do. But ratings of the president's ability to change Washington are down a net 18 points from a year ago. His capacity to get things done, down 24 points. And just 19% give Mr. Trump high ratings for having the right temperament for the job. Get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired. A majority of Americans also feel negatively about the president as a leader, as commander-in-chief, and as a representative of America abroad. One potential bright spot for Republicans, Americans are the most satisfied with the economy that they've been in nearly two decades. The president is not getting the credit, though, but Republican incumbents hope that optimism will protect them in November. It's the economy, stupid. Did you ever hear that one? Joining me now. <laughs> and that's actually the one thing that may save Republicans from the blue wave that uh, I've been talking about for quite a long time that's supposed to happen this year in the United States, uh, where Democrats take over at least the House of Representatives and possibly the U.S. Senate, which seemed impossible a year ago. Uh, and the one thing that may save Republicans is the good economy, assuming it stays good. And not that uh, right now the people responding to the poll are giving Trump credit for it. They give Dem uh, they give Obama credit for it more than Trump. And like I said, I thought that was a really good news summary, both of the shutdown and also Trump year one, which you saw they did. I, I showed that in like uh, the Christmas and New Year's shows. But of course, now it's the real year one. And so there's a little bit of that look back and the one criticism I had when I first saw that news summary is they showed the Trump hypocrisy on the shutdown. But of course, whenever parties switch, uh, when there's going to be just as much hypocrisy on the other side. But then I saw later in this, this is just like a brief 45 second clip, the uh, on Meet the Press, Chuck Todd showed some Democratic hypocrisy on shutdowns. 
over here. Many people have pointed out Republicans who were all for a shutdown when President Obama was in office are opposed to one now. But Democrats, too, have had a change of heart. Here's what three prominent Democrats sounded like in 2013 when Republicans were threatening to shut down the government over health care. You do not use the, sh the threat of shutting down government to try to advance uh, your policy agenda. That's just not the way it works. You could say we're shutting down the government. We're not going to raise the debt ceiling until you pass immigration but reform. It would be governmental chaos. I know you. But if we're talking about competency and accountability, I have a question for the Republicans. We just went through a government shutdown of your creation. Who is going to be held accountable for that? Well, joining me now is one of those Democrats. <laughs> and so, like I said, uh, I think that when NBC's Meet the Press showed that clip, they made up for the lack of Democratic hypocrisy on shutdowns in their original four and a half minute news summary. And uh, the next best news summary was the ABC This Week with George Stephanopoulos summary. It's shorter. It's only uh, two minutes, 45 seconds, and uh, it has a lot less context, but of course, it has a lot less length, so uh, you can decide whether that was a, a good trade-off or not, comparing it to what NBC's Meet the Press did. Here's George Stephanopoulos starting uh, the This Week program on Sunday over here. Stroke of midnight on the anniversary of Trump's inaugural, the government shut down. The president says Democrats did that on purpose to spoil his party. Democrats insist that Trump just does not know how to close a deal. Many of you at home might agree with Louisiana Senator John Kennedy, who said this on Friday. Our country was founded by geniuses, but it's being run by idiots. So far, the Trump administration is doing what it can to limit the impact of the shutdown. But many national parks and monuments, like the Statue of Liberty, did in fact close Saturday, a preview of the disruption to come if the shutdown lingers. And our brand new ABC News Washington Post poll out today shows Americans more inclined to blame President Trump and Republicans than the Democrats by a 20-point margin. At the one-year mark, the president's approval rating the lowest of any president in modern times. Sentiment playing out yesterday at women's marches in hundreds of cities all across the country. One bright spot, Americans have the most positive views on the economy in nearly two decades. But just 38 percent give Trump the credit 50% credit the Obama administration. I want to start out now with our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. And John, you're at the White House this morning. Not a lot of activity there yesterday. No meetings between the president and congressional leaders. What's the latest on where things stand on the shutdown? Well, George, right now, this looks like a standoff that does not lend itself to a breakthrough. The Democrats are saying that they will not vote to reopen the government until they have an agreement on immigration. And Republicans are saying they won't even negotiate on immigration until the government is reopened. But amidst all the finger pointing and the recriminations, Senator Schumer, the Democratic leader, and the president are tantalizingly close to a deal on the underlying issue, issue here on immigration. I am told that the president has expressed a willingness to have a deal that would be legal status for the dreamers in exchange for full funding of his border wall. That's $20 billion over seven years. He would do that even if he had no change to the visa lottery, no change to the policy on family reunification, so-called chained migration. Those are big priorities for the Republicans, but I'm told the president would be willing to do it without them. And further, George, I am told from Democratic sources that Senator Schumer is open to such a deal, even that full funding, something approaching $20 billion over seven years. Uh, so we have the outlines of a significant deal that would make many conservatives unhappy. They care about those immigration priorities, uh, many of them more than the wall, and something that would make Democrats, some of them, very unhappy because they never wanted to fund the border wall. The question is, could they sell it to either side? In the meantime, John, there is some movement. To hmm. So, yeah, I thought that was a good news summary, not as much context about year one and everything that's been happening as was in the NBC Meet the Press clip that was longer, uh, but a much better uh, delineation of the issues. And uh, you saw before uh, Jonathan Carl went through the four immigration issues, he basically talked about the impasse that didn't look like there was going to be any resolution where Democrats were saying they weren't going to. Uh, reopen the government until DACA or the Dreamer, the immigration problem was fixed. Uh, DACA stands for uh, Deferred Action on Childhood Arrivals. It's, you know, I already talked about what the Dreamer kids were. And uh, 
that so Democrats said they weren't going to reopen the government until that issue was taken care of, and Republicans said they weren't even going to negotiate as long as the government was closed. And it's Democrats who basically caved, although they supposedly, uh, although none of my clips are showing this because this just happened this morning, supposedly they got an assurance from Mitch McConnell that there will be in the next three weeks a bill, some sort of uh, fix to the DACA dreamer problem that will come up for a vote and some sort of fair process of uh, debate and amendments in the Senate. But that doesn't uh, guarantee what's going to happen in the House or with uh, whether Donald Trump is going to support it and sign it. And you heard those four issues. It's not just the legal status for the Dreamers. They, the Republicans and especially Trump want to connect it up to funding like $20 billion for this uh, stupid border wall. And uh, actually the last clip I'm going to show you is uh, Luis Gutierrez explaining why actually we probably should give Donald Trump his stupid idiotic border wall and I'll expand on that after I show you the last clip before of course I show you the bonus Sandy clip for the Sandy fans out there who want to wait for the Sandy clip at the end uh, but it's not just the border wall and the legal status for dreamers it's also this so-called chain migration which used to be family reunification. Republicans used to be like the pro-family party and they were, it just means if you're here and you're getting citizenship, it means that you can sponsor members of your family to come over because that actually is a good endorsement. And, uh, and the question isn't, uh, and there's some question as to how, whether basically it should involve just like parents and children or whether it should go to grandparents and cousins and, uh, in a lot of the world, those extended families are real support networks, and it is good for our country to allow people to bring in their family. Uh, and that means that we have immigrants who have a built-in support network. So that is like the most uh, negative, uh, the, the worst proposal that the Trump administration and the most conservative Republicans are trying to get through. Uh, then there's also the diversity lottery. And... I know a less about that, but it also it makes sure that we're not forgetting certain countries, uh, that we're not being racist in our immigration policies, although it doesn't only apply to Africa, it applies to underrepresented countries anywhere in the world in terms of where we take immigrants uh, from. In, in, you know, I'm not sure that even, I think that's one of the strengths of the United States is our diversity and it, it, both the diversity lottery and, well, and the so-called chain migration family reunification programs are things that uh, I don't think Democrats should give up, which is also in that final clip I'm going to show from Luis Gutierrez. He explains it, I think, more eloquently than I just did. Uh, but like I said, uh, those were the four issues that I think were really well delineated in that ABC News summary. And then this next, it's just a little over 90 seconds. This is the news summary from CNN State of the Union. Jake Tapper uh, did a briefer news summary, but I think outlined at least the shutdown issues with the State of the Union at that point yesterday morning on CNN State of the Union being still shut down over in this clip. We're in Washington where the State of our Union is still shut down with sides not even talking. It's a second full day of the government shutdown right now, and according to sources, Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell and Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer did not speak all day Saturday, despite both spending the day on Capitol Hill. In an interview with CNN late Saturday, Schumer said he would not support a three-week extension of government spending and outlined his demands to reopen the government. We need a good bipartisan agreement that allows us to get a good defense number, get a good non-defense number, get a vote on the um, Dreamers bill and get that done and deal with uh, the disasters too. Now, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he won't negotiate on issues until the government is funded and open. And he plans to hold a vote on a three week government funding bill at 1 a.m. Monday if both sides cannot come to an agreement earlier than that. We're ready to vote again. All the country needs is for the Democratic leader to withdraw his filibuster and let a bipartisan majority pass this bill and reopen, reopen the United States government. President Trump spent Saturday the first anniversary of his presidency in Washington after canceling a planned trip to Mar-a-Lago for a fundraiser. The co-author of The Art of the Deal made calls from the Oval Office 
though Schumer said the president did not reach out to him. Let's go right to someone who's been at the center. <laughs> so uh, I like that last part of the CNN State of the Union news summary where they showed that picture. It, it actually got a, a lot of negative feedback, especially from the left on Twitter and Facebook, uh, where Donald Trump is like holding a phone up to his ear and staring blankly off into the distance. It's pretty clear that he didn't reach out to Democrats in any way, that he had that meeting with Chuck Schumer on Friday where he basically uh, blew up any sort of deal. And uh, I'll talk about the way Donald Trump blew up this deal to begin with, uh, which is, like I said, this is the Trump shutdown that just ended. I was going to blame it on Trump for uh, good reasons as to how he blew up this whole uh, fix for immigration over the last few weeks, which you would you're aware of if you've been watching the show for the last few weeks, especially last week with his whole uh, shithole comments about, and that has to do with the diverse, diversity lottery I was talking about before the last clip. Uh, that's basically what Trump was saying that we, you know, we don't want to have a diversity lottery because it means that we're also taking people from a bunch of underrepresented countries in Africa, the, the so-called shithole countries. And the thing is where you're from does is not, you know, as we were talking about last week, being from Norway is not a skill. And uh, that is why I think this whole diversity lottery uh, program, getting rid of the diversity lottery program is a mistake. And I've already explained why I think getting rid of the family reunification program is a mistake, which I'll talk about more, like I said, after I show the final Luis Gutierrez clip. But before I get to the newsmaker clips, I want to show one more news summary. This is the Fox News Sunday news summary. I promised that at the beginning, Chris Wallace does an intro that is uh, somewhat fair and balanced, uh, it's somewhat similar to what you saw from the other news programs. But then when they go to their reporter, Mike Emanuel, I think it's much more skewed towards the anti-Schumer, anti-Democrat position. Uh, you can let me know what you think after we watch that slightly over two minute clip together over here. Washington. Congress is still here this weekend, still trying to reach a deal to reopen the government after the clock ran out on funding midnight Friday. The shutdown coinciding with the one year anniversary of the Trump presidency. The president canceled a trip to Florida to stay in Washington until they reach a compromise. This hour, we'll discuss the way forward with White House Budget Chief Mick Mulvaney and Democratic Senator Chris Coons, part of a small group trying to make a deal. But first, let's bring in Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel live on Capitol Hill with the latest. Mike. Well, Chris, there are no visible signs of progress in ending this government shutdown. In fact, things have gotten pretty personal with the Senate Majority Leader blasting his counterpart, Chuck Schumer. The president would not give him everything he wants on the issue of illegal immigration in one afternoon in the Oval Office. Republicans were quick to brand it the Schumer shutdown after Senate Democrats blocked a four-week government funding extension late Friday night. It also would have provided a six-year extension of health insurance to an estimated nine million children. Democrats held out for a deal on the so-called dreamers, young people brought to this country illegally by their parents, and now sound like they're adding to their demands. At this point, we feel very, very um, strongly about the issues, not just dreamers, but opioids, pensions, not funding the military on a CR basis, and we feel the American people are on our side. The shutdown of House the lawmakers sound aggravated after they passed the government funding nice extension and it was rejected by Senate Democrats. That led to this dust up on the House floor Speaker, taking aim at Schumer. A majority in the House and a majority in the Senate have voted to prevent this shutdown and keep the government open. Bring the, the poster to the chair for his observation. Soon this shutdown will get real if by Monday morning there is no deal and much of the federal workforce is on furlough. Chris? Not good if there are. And maybe that's why it, Democrats <laughs> caved at this point and decided to give up the shutdown for three weeks of Senate debate on immigration. But uh, that last point by Mike Emanuel. But I think the Mike Emanuel report was much more anti Schumer blaming the shutdown on Democrats than any of the more fair and balanced 
summaries I showed from three other corporate news outlets, uh, NBC, ABC, and CNN. CBS didn't really do a news summary of uh, the shutdown, although they, I am going to show a Paul Ryan clip as the uh, final of these next four clips, which I think will support my position that even though Democrats caved on the shutdown, at least for three weeks, to get this uh, immigration debate, it was really Trump who was responsible for the shutdown. That's why my title is hashtag Trump shutdown. Why, and even, uh, well, it's now hashtag Trump shutdown ends question mark. And it has ended for three weeks, whether it will uh, still, whether it will, whether the government's going to shut down again in three weeks or not, I guess we'll find out based on how this immigration debate goes. But as to who is responsible for the shutdown on Friday, I'm going to show you four clips. First, Dick Durbin, then Tom Cotton, uh, both first uh, Democratic and then a Republican senator who were in the infamous shithole countries meeting, both of them. And uh, one of them is a liar because they're both, basically they have uh, inconsistent stories, or maybe they do. Uh, we'll... I showed you a Tom Cotton clip last week that is kind of superseded by the Tom Cotton clip. I'm going to show you second of these four uh, this week. And then uh, I'll have a clip number 10 will be, oh no, then I'll have Mick Mulvaney, the uh, White House Office of Management, Management and Budget Director, uh, talking about uh, why there was a shutdown. And then Finally, Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, talking about why there was a shutdown. And based on these four clips, I will argue that Trump was responsible for the shutdown. Uh, and the best argument for that, of course, comes from the uh, Senate Minority Whip Dick Durbin, basically the number two Democrat in the Senate, over in this clip. I accepted the president's challenge, produced the bill he asked for, gave it to him 48 hours later, and the infamous White House meeting took yeah. place. Let me ask you about that White House meeting. Um, you've said you've not leaked the contents of that meeting. That's true. You amplified it, though. Why'd you do that? Because the president denied it happened. I was in Chicago. I woke up the next morning. The story had been in the Washington Post the night before, and the president tweeted, it didn't happen. And it did happen, Chuck. I, 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 I asked this and because I played that ad that the Trump campaign is playing that's accusing Democrats of being accomplices to crimes, to murders for some reason. Um, not helpful to a negotiation, obviously, to do name calling. This became personal for many of you. Not helpful to this. Do you regret that that became public? I'm sorry that it was said. I'm sorry that the president denied it. But for the longest time, we've heard that the, the driving force behind the administration's position on immigration is safety. Mm -hmm. It's terrorism. You heard Mark Short said the same thing earlier. What we heard in that Thursday meeting was much different. It really reflected something which I hope we will not continue to subscribe to in this country. We are a nation of immigrants. That is part of our values. We want to keep America safe. That's our first priority. But let us not turn immigrants into criminals. Let us not deport the dreamers. All right. What deal will you take to reopen the government? Obviously, I think... And uh, I'm going to show you some of the clips that uh, Dick Durbin was referencing there about the new uh, Trump campaign ad against Democrats calling them complicit in any murders committed by undocumented immigrants and actually showing this uh, guy here in Sacramento, Bracamontes, who killed some sheriff's deputies who was an undocumented immigrant. And I'm going to show you a, a couple clips on that later. Uh, but you saw there Dick Durbin explaining how it was that Donald Trump really blew up negotiations with his racist comments that I covered extensively last week. And here you'll see Tom Cotton in this next clip giving like the fourth version of what happened in that infamous meeting, the infamous, you know, shithole countries or maybe shithouse countries meeting. And uh, first Tom Cotton said he didn't remember. And then he remembered that it didn't happen. And now there was like salty language or on all sides. And, well, whatever. I'll show you this uh, two and a half minute clip from Tom Cotton. Uh, I think he's the liar, not Dick Durbin, but you can tell me what you think down in the comment section after we uh, watch this clip together over here. All right, you, you questioned the credibility of the Democrats when they go into a meeting and they come out. I got to ask you about um, the infamous meeting of 10 days ago. Did the president use a vulgarity? 
Chuck, I'm not going to get into every word that was or was not said. I will say, as many people have said, Kirsten Nelson, under oath, mm -hmm. that a lot of strong language was used. I think oh, it's fair, okay, fair to now, say that, but, that, that the, there was some cursing behind closed doors. Okay, why but couldn't you, what, but what I don't understand is in the first 48 hours, if there was a controversy about whether it was said, you implied it wasn't said at all. Um, you didn't, you, and it made it seem as if you were accusing Dick Durbin Here, of being a liar. Here's what, here's. And Lindsey Graham of being a liar. Here's you, what was mis- do you Lindsey understand? Graham, I mean, as far as I know, Lindsey Graham hasn't spoken on the record about this, Chuck. Here's the point: that Senator Durbin represented that President Trump used re repeatedly, repeatedly used vile, racist, hateful language. That's not the case. If it was, why didn't he say anything? Why didn't he slam his paper down and get up and walk out? What, the, what President Trump and others in that meeting expressed was astonishment that Senator Durbin and Senator Graham would bring a proposal that wouldn't move us towards a skills-based system, but move us towards a system in which we are rewarding people based on where they come from, not who they are. But the whole point of immigration reform is to judge people as individuals based on who they are and what they can contribute to our society, not where they come from or who they're related to. But uh, to go back to this issue of, of, of sort of trust on both sides, you imply, you let it sort of hang out there that Dick Durbin and Lindsey Graham were misleading the public completely. And only now are you admitting, well, yeah, there was some vulgarity used. That isn't what she did, said a week ago. That isn't what she said 10 days ago at the time. Why? Chuck, I, I've never denied that there wasn't strong language used in the meeting by lots of people. You know, I, I'm not a shrinking violent about these things. Mm -hmm. I've been in a command post overseas. I've heard some salty language before. What I'm saying is it is a gross misrepresentation. Were you so, offended? Just, Lindsey uh, Graham appears to be offended. He said he said his piece. Were you offended by what the president said? Uh, I was not offended, and nobody in the meeting expressed their offense at any of Lindsey the language Graham that was being Lindsey Graham didn't make his piece? Lindsey Graham made a, state, made a case about immigration policy. He didn't make a case about what the president was saying. He said in his that he said his piece about what American ideals are about. Did he, did he do that or not? Yes, he did. And that's part of immigration policies, because immigration policy is a part of who we are, who we're going to bring to this country to become new American citizens. All right, Senator Tom Cotton, Republican Marcus, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, like I said, I think Tom Cotton is the liar here. Compare If you're choosing between Tom Cotton and Dick Durbin, especially if you've been paying attention to what Lindsey Graham said, he's saying, oh, he was just talking about immigration policy when what Lindsey Graham apparently said it, when... Uh, Donald Trump said, you know, why do we want all these people from shithole countries? Lindsey Graham said, well, you know, Mr. President, that's uh, not how we should be talking about this debate. And, you know, uh, my ancestors came to this country from what they called shithole countries at the time. And that's why, if you saw uh, that clip I showed last week of uh, Christian Nielsen, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary, when she talked about how uh, Lindsey Graham used salty language and... Donald Trump used salty language and she was cross-examined on, you know, didn't Lindsey Graham use the same salty language that Donald Trump used? And it's not really the language, it's the racism as to why we don't want to accept people from certain countries. And that's sort of the problem with rejecting this diversity lottery program that uh, apparently is one of the four big issues that is going to be debated during the next few weeks. But... Uh, having shown Dick Durbin and Tom Cotton talking about how uh, last week there was this uh, infamous shithole countries meeting that blew up uh, the immigration deal that led to this government shutdown. Uh, there was one more meeting that also led to this government shutdown for which I blame Donald Trump. That's why it's the Trump shutdown in the title of my video. And that's the meeting on Friday between Donald Trump and Chuck Schumer and this next clip is Mick Mulvaney over on Fox News Sunday, where I, I think actually Chris Wallace in this clip does a pretty good job of pointing out how Trump might be responsible for the shutdown based on uh, the issues that came up in that Friday meeting. And uh, I also think it's kind of bizarre that uh, Chris Wallace puts up two issues from the meeting in a graphic, and then Mick Mulvaney's like, can you put those back up so I can remember remember what they are? And it's, you know, uh, building the wall and uh, full appropriations for the wall and uh, full funding for defense. And I didn't even look down at my notes for that. So uh, I don't have the greatest memory. You know, I'm, I guess, Mick Mulvaney's age at this point, but I seem to have a better memory than him. For I can remember two items, 
like 30 seconds after I've looked at them, or actually it was a few minutes ago, but anyway, this is uh, how Mick Mulvaney tries to explain that uh, it wasn't Trump's fault that negotiations broke down last Friday in the meeting between Trump and Chuck Schumer, and I don't really buy it. You can let me know what you think down in the comment section while we watch this clip together over here. Thank you, because I want to talk about victories. I want to take you back to the big meeting that was held on Friday in the White House between President Trump and Chuck Schumer. Senate Democratic sources tell me this. Let's put it up on the screen. Schumer raised full funding of a wall, more than $18 billion, and a full increase in defense spending, around $80 billion. But they say that White House Chief of Staff John Kelly later called back and said to Schumer that it was, quote, too liberal. Is that true? Yeah, is there a chance you can you put that list back up? Because I can respond to each of those in turn. Well, I, I we can remember it, but okay. go, go ahead. So full, full funding. Full funding. Full funding for the wall. No, what Mr. Schumer offered the president was an authorization for funding, not an appropriation. I know that's deep down in the weeds for folks who don't live in Washington, D.C., but the difference between authorization and appropriation is like night and day. There is already authorization to build a wall on the southern border that Chuck Schumer voted for in 2006. Hasn't been built because the money was never appropriated, was never funded. Did. And that's the same deal that Chuck Schumer offered on Saturday. Um, the let, let, let's focus on that because sure. I think that that's important. Uh, yesterday, you went after Schumer hard on this issue. Take a look. Chuck Schumer actually had the gall to look at the president and said, I'm giving you everything you ask for the wall, and then when pressed, admitted that he wasn't doing it. That's the type of negotiation that Mr. Schumer has been engaged in with the president. And you have to ask yourself at one point, it, does it even become profitable to continue to, to, to work with somebody like that? Now, this is to get complicated because you've raised a new issue here. Schumer sure. staff says, and specifically in response to that, that you're not telling the truth. They say, they say that he offered not one year's funding, which was what was suggested yesterday, but full funding, 18 to 20 billion dollars in year one, that they were going to they were going to put that on the table, not offer. I should say that they were willing to discuss that, and that you guys walked away from that. I mean, if you got full funding for the wall, that would be the deal of the century. Why not take yes for an answer? It, it, it would be the deal of the century because that was not the offer. The author, again, again, I, I don't want to split hairs. Uh, no, on, I understand on, the difference between process, authorization, authorization and appropriation. appropriation. Ask, ask Mr. Schumer's office if they offered to appropriate $20 billion. Go to the next thing that was on your list, by the way, about full funding for defense. Not true. He was offering something that was in the budget request from uh, FY18. I know because I happen to write that budget. What the, uh, the request is right now in the discussion is about the NDAA levels, which is slightly higher, and that Mr. Schumer not only voted for, but is taking credit for back home for fully funding the military. He won't give the president that higher figure. I, 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 he gives I, him a lower figure as part of the negotiation. I don't play a role as a negotiator here, but, le but let me do it just for a moment. Sure. If Senator Schumer comes back and says, no, I'm not talking about authorization. I'm talking about appropriation. 18 to $20 billion right now, you can build your wall. And there are more Democrats saying that, including Congressman Gutierrez. Would the president accept that, and would you make a deal? And again, I'm not going to negotiate with you either, but let's go back to what the request was at the very beginning, that we were happy to talk about DACA, want to resolve DACA. What is part of um, a DACA deal look like from the administration's perspective? Number one, the southern border defense, the southern border uh, security gets fully funded. That means the wall, that means the $20 billion. We also deal with chain migration, we deal with a visa lottery system, and we deal so with what, what, interior So you seem to Those be suggesting that even table. if you got the $20 billion, that wouldn't be enough. Well, again, those are the four things, the four principles we've asked for in the discussion. Mr. Schumer comes in and offers us none of that. That's not the basis for an agreement. But final question in that regard. If you got the $20 billion, would you make the deal? Again, I'm not going to negotiate on behalf of the president. That would certainly cover one of the four things we've asked for. Final question. This is... So there you see, again, uh, the Mick Mulvaney as an administration official backing up what I showed in uh, the previous clip as to, uh, or the clip before that uh, showed that... Uh, the four things that the Trump administration is supposedly trying to get is not just some sort of status for the dreamers, and that could be a hang-up in the next few weeks. Are they talking about uh, the really right-wing dreamer bill, uh, Dream Act bill, where uh, they only get like legal status, a, a right to work that they have to renew every three years, and there's like no path to citizenship in, unless they can find 
some other way that's outside of you know anything authorized by the bill or there's the democratic proposal which you know the graham durbin bill where they actually got citizenship after like eight or nine years of this long arduous process but there was also they wouldn't be able to bring in any family members and there was some uh, limit on the diverse diversity lottery program and there was some funding for the wall and uh you heard chris wallace in that last clip trying to negotiate some sort of deal and saying you know if they give you the wall that's the deal of the century and uh, i hope that's the way it ends up and uh, i'll talk about that a little more after i show the luis gutierrez clip that chris wallace actually referenced in that last clip where uh, i think he argues uh, pretty well that uh, democrats should say give him his stupid idiotic wall that won't work and can't happen and uh if but not this uh, diversity lottery and especially not this so-called chain migration which is family reunification that is not something democrats should cave on and that's something we'll find out in the next few weeks but uh before i get to those clips i promised one more clip on you know whose fault it was that the government shut down over the weekend and this is uh sort of the reverse of the dick durbin clip i showed at the beginning of these four clips this is the speaker of the house paul ryan giving the strongest Republican argument for why it's the fault of the Democrats that uh, the government shut down. And you can disagree or agree with this down in the comment section, and I'll talk about it with you a little more after we watch it together over here. I'm trying to assign blame. I'm trying to get, just figure out what's going on here. This is a very familiar play. We've been here before, yeah, exactly. as you say. And, I, and it's futile. It and, never works. But I want to know why a president who came, just what's gone wrong? Why has he not been able to apply? He came in as the, the great negotiator. What is it that has made it impossible for a person who ran on fixing the it's, system unable to get It's a good get question because this. we're so baffled. If we were saying, for instance, we are never going to do a DACA solution, we're going to kick these kids out, then I might understand Democrats getting frustrated. But the, the, what's baffling about this, John, is we were in negotiations on how to solve this problem, and then they blew that up and stopped these negotiations. So our, we have Kevin McCarthy, representing House Republicans, who was negotiating with Dick Durbin and other leaders. That's what's here's baffling the thing, about this. Here's what they say, and you had two Republicans in the Senate who voted against this funding measure for roughly similar reasons, which is the president's been a moving target. Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Republicans in the Senate, said, we're spinning our wheels until we know where the president is. So the Democrats felt like, or this is their case anyway, they felt like he's a moving target, let's use this moment of leverage, as, as Republicans did with Obamacare in 2013. Which, was, about which, which didn't work and, and didn't... And, and I can look. Right. But it was something they cared about. Democrats care about this, too. I guess the question is. The question is, where's the president on this issue? Is that, and is he going to stay in one place? Yeah. So I think it's I think what president should do is leave room for negotiation to get a solution. That's exactly what he's doing. He's basically saying, in addition to a DACA solution, we have to have border security, including funding for a wall. We've got we, he wants to get rid of the diversity visa program. And he want, we want to move from a system of immigration based on family relations to one based on right. skills and merit for what the economy needs perfectly common sense. Here's the issue. If we simply did DACA without incumbent reforms, then you'd have a DACA problem five years down the road. We want to fix the problem and the root cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. DACA is a symptom of a broken immigration pro system. We want to fix the root cause of this problem while we deal with DACA so that we don't have 700,000 more DACA kids in five years. That's perfectly common sense, and that's all the president is saying. I, I want to see... <laughs> Well, that's not all the president is saying. And I actually watched a White House representative over on the Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer earlier today make that same argument and say that, you know, we have to fix all the other problems now or we're going to have hundreds of thousands of more DACA people in a few more years. And not just saying it's because of border security, which might be some way that undocumented immigrants could get into the country uh, as children, which is what the DACA recipients are but also talking about uh, the diversity lottery and so-called chain migration family reunification is saying that uh, those two programs also uh, somehow contribute to uh, illegal immigration when they're both legal immigration programs. And they really aren't problematic programs, although some people have tried to tie them to terrorism and uh, there's no real evidence of that except for like one or two anecdotal examples that are totally overwhelmed by the 
huge vast majority of the people who actually come in through those programs and if you disagree you can point out evidence down in the comment section uh, and before I get to the next section of clips I have been reading the live comments along the way and uh, I guess one of the benefits of doing this uh, delayed program not the usual time is I get a, a different uh, type of audience or different uh, geographical audience here you can see a couple of my super chat contributions come from Sweden and Denmark. Uh, I have some Swedish kroners and some Danish kroners, or no, it's Swedish kronas and Danish kroners. If I'm, I think that both of them uh, turn out to be like five or somewhere between five and ten dollars in U.S. like real money. No, I'm sorry, I don't mean that in uh, U.S. dollars uh, here. So uh, thank you, Robert Erickson and Bryn Jidik, or however you pronounce that uh, second name there, but I appreciate uh, all the Super Chat contributions and especially my Patreon contributions. Uh, I've been looking over my 2017 YouTube income and actually it is smaller than the support I get both from Super Chat contributions and from Patreon and I'll talk a little bit more about my Patreon patrons at the end of the video so I don't interrupt the uh, flow of uh, the news clips and my political commentary and media criticism. Uh, but I'm in between, like I said, that was the four clips I wanted to show about who is to blame. The next couple clips here are uh, about um, that ad that I, the really anti-Democrat ad that I mentioned earlier and it was in uh, the Meet the Press clip I showed earlier um, in which the Trump campaign has attacked Democrats as being complicit in the murders committed by illegal immigrants, including this uh, Bracamontes guy who's on trial right now in Sacramento for killing some sheriff's deputies. Uh, and it's a really disingenuous argument. And to add to the, especially because immigrants, even undocumented immigrants, commit crimes at a lower rate than the rest of the population uh, and there's a lot of studies that show that uh, but to add to the disingenu disingenuous excuse me disingenuousness of that argument is Mark Short the legislative affairs director at the White House is actually claiming that a an ad put out by the Donald Trump campaign is an outside group and he means it's you know not White House staff, but it's of course still Donald Trump who's making this really disingenuous argument. Uh, and then I'll also show you how uh, Bernie Sanders reacted to this ad, but first here's uh, the White House representative Mark Short in this clip. You're taking a very conciliatory tone this morning. I want to play an ad that you guys unveiled last night. It's pure evil. President Trump is right. Build the wall. Deport criminals. Stop illegal immigration now. Democrats who stand in our way will be complicit in every murder committed by illegal immigrants. Tell me how that helps negotiations today. You're calling Democrats um, accomplices to potential murderers. Well, you know that that ad is produced by an outside group and not those of us in the White House. Donald Party. J. Trump for president is an outside let, group? Let me talk about... Wait, wait, wait. wait. wait Donald J. Trump for president is an outside group? It's not done, it's done from a political organization, it's not done from people working inside the White House. But let me, let me talk about the basis of that ad. Today what we have is we have over 2,500 people on a terror watch list trying to get into our country each and every day. Each and every, I'm sorry, each year. That's about seven per day, Chuck, that are being apprehended or turned away. We want to solve the problem of immigration coming in and the threat that it poses to our country. I think that that's a natural debate that we should be having. It's not something we should say, hey, let's do this at some other point in time. But if you want to solve this problem, is that the way to treat opponents, political opponents here? Chuck, is that ad, let me ask you this, is that ad helpful to you today? I think it's helpful to continue to raise awareness of what the the, the tone of that ad. Do you find the tone of that ad helpful? I think that the data in that ad continues to remind people that there are people coming Use across data, our border. Tone. Is the tone wrong? I'm telling you that the data of the ad shows that there are people coming across our border that pose threats to our country. Yes. All right, Mark Short. I have to leave it there. And we got. <laughs> so that's the representative of the White House, the Legislative Affairs Director, Mark Short, trying to defend that ad that 
showed a clip of, uh, I think, is, is his name Luis Bracamonte? I can't even remember the guy's first name. It's not like we should remember his name, but I happen to remember his last name is Bracamonte. He killed Sacramento Sheriff's deputies and Placer County Sheriff deputy. Uh, I mean, he's really a, a bad hombre or a really evil guy, but he's not representative of the Dreamers, the DACA recipients, undocumented immigrants in general, uh, immigrants in general, none of those groups are in any way represented by that uh, Bracamontes dude. And I think Mark Short's explanation there was pretty weak, although the next three weeks, uh, that's a different meaning of the word weak, sorry, uh, but the next three weeks are gonna tell us if the American people are gonna buy into the evil, uh, criminal, alien, illegal, argument that you saw from that ad and from Mark Short trying to, you know, temper it a little bit, uh, or whether they're actually going to see immigrants as they really are, as, you know, productive members of our community. I mean, they're bad people in any group, but uh, as I said earlier, immigrants are responsible for, immigrants commit crimes at a lower rate than non-immigrants, especially undocumented immigrants who are like totally fearful of uh, having run-ins with the police in general because they don't have their papers. Of course, they're less likely to commit crimes and, you know, unless you're talking about the small percentage of people like Bracamontes or gang members that the Trump administration is always trying to play up. Uh, but uh, don't just uh, take my word for it. I'm going to show you a couple clips of Senator Bernie Sanders, uh, who may or may not be running for president in 2020, but is certainly a representative of the more progressive view of the Democratic Party, even though he's so far such a progressive Democrat that he's not even a Democrat, he's an independent. And he responds to uh, that same uh, awful Bracamontes ad saying Democrats are complicit, talking to Jake Tapper on CNN State of the Union. But it also starts with this great clip from uh, Senator Tammy Duckworth, where uh, she calls out Donald Trump for... Uh, saying that the Democrats are hurting the military by not funding the government. And one of the criticism, criticisms I have of this uh, next clip is they show that uh, Tammy Duckworth clip, but they cut the clip before she actually calls Donald Trump cadet bone spurs. That was like the best part of the clip, but they don't show the cadet bone spurs part. Uh, but uh, they do have Bernie Sanders responding to this terrible ad which I will talk with you about after we watch that clip together over here. Welcome back to State of the Union. I'm Jake Tapper. Day two of the federal government shutdown and Senate Democrats are holding their ground and pointing the finger squarely at President Trump. Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois, who lost both legs while serving in Iraq, she had this to say about the president's cries that the Democrats don't value the military. I will not be lectured about what our military needs by a five deferment draft dodger. Tough words. Independent Senator Bernie Sanders is calling for the government to reopen as soon as possible, but he also says he will not vote for any government funding bill without a permanent fix for the so-called dreamers. And Senator Sanders joins me now. Um, Senator Sanders, uh, thanks so much for being here. Hours after the shutdown went into effect, the Trump campaign released a new web ad accusing uh, the Democrats of being, quote, complicit in every murder committed by illegal immigrants. Take a look. President Trump is right. Build the wall. Deport criminals. Stop illegal immigration now. Democrats who stand in our way will be complicit in every murder committed by illegal immigrants. What's your response? You know, it, it, it is really unbelievable and, and, and so sad for our country that we have a president of the United States who says such nonsense and such outrageous statements. What we are talking about here now in terms of the dreamers is something that is supported, I think, in a recent poll in CNN by 84% of the American people. CBS, 87% of the American people say that these young people who came to this country at the age of two or three or four, who are now working, 20,000 of them are teachers, they are in school, they are in the military, their legal status needs to be protected after Trump took it away in September. They need a path towards citizenship. That's not my view. That is the overwhelming view of the American people. And then you see a president put stuff like that on the air, trying to divide us up, 
trying to foment hatred. It is, it is really sad. I see an end poll also suggested. And actually, the next question there from Jake Tapper is uh, kind of prescient that I didn't show, uh, where he mentions that uh, a vast majority of Americans agree with the Democrats on uh, DACA or the Dreamers, some sort of uh, bill coming through Congress and being signed by the president that protects them and gives them legal status. But uh, they don't agree with tying that to shutting down the government, apparently, which I don't know if that's what made Democrats decide to cave and give uh, another three-week continuing resolution. And they also got chip funding for six years. The, uh, you saw that in the news summaries. I'm not going to go back and start talking about uh, children's health insurance. Uh, but I thought that uh, Bernie Sanders there gave a, a good progressive view response to that uh, terrible ad from the Trump campaign, the Donald Trump for president or committee to reelect the president or whatever it is that uh, I can't remember the name, the name of the group that put that ad out, but it was the Trump campaign, uh, basically. And uh, also, I think that uh, Bernie Sanders talked really eloquently about why it is that we need to protect the DACA recipients or the dreamers, as they're called, uh, in the second Bernie Sanders clip I wanted to show you. This is uh, talking about whether we should, uh, Democrats should uh, be willing to give the wall to Donald Trump in order to get protection for the Dreamers. Uh, and you'll see Bernie Sanders kind of dodges that question, but he also mentions something that I think is really true that I will discuss about you. I will discuss with you after we watch that clip together. Uh, this is uh, clip number 15 over here. Thank you. Would you be willing to vote for $20 billion in appropriations to build a border wall in exchange for, the you and the Democrats are in the minority, in exchange for a pathway to some sort of legal status for the Dreamers? Is that a, a compromise you're willing to make? It's something, look, I think the wall was a great idea in the 15th century when the Chinese built the Great China Wall. I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense now, but I'm willing to sit down in a room and do what the American people want. And what the American people want is to provide legal status to the dreamers and a path towards citizenship. Let's sit down, let's do that. But that has to be passed. Let me say this. If we allow Trump to get away with what he did, and that is repeal uh, the executive order on, on DACA's, and if these 800,000 people, young people, are subjected to deportation. This will be one of the ugliest stains in the history of the United States. Young people who know no other country than this country, who came here at two or three years of age, to now be subjected to deportation would be a stain that this country would never recover from. Senator Sanders, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank and that's so true, that last part from Bernie Sanders. I personally know and have worked with several people who fit into the so-called dreamer category. And the idea that we would deport those people who are uh, really amazing, productive members of our community. And uh, I mean, for it's it's just unthinkable. It's immoral. It's wrong. And... I'm sad that it's something that there's a significant part of our population who are willing to consider. And it's not even just the uh, so-called illegals, the uh, undocumented immigrants. You notice that uh, after all of these years of Republicans saying that they're for legal immigration, just not I illegal immigration, that they actually want to curtail uh, significant amounts of legal immigration. And uh, that's bogus and uh, I'll talk about that a little more after I showed the uh, Luis Gutierrez clip that's uh, the uh, not the next clip but the one after that but uh, before I get to the that final clip before the bonus Sandy clip I want to show Dick Durbin one more time responding to this uh, slander from Donald Trump that I don't know maybe it worked better than we thought because the Democrats did cave on the shutdown where uh, Donald Trump and the Republicans were trying to blame Democrats for, you know, our soldiers weren't going to get paid during this government shutdown, which was kind of a bogus manipulation 
uh, where, you know, if they wanted to pay the soldier, you know, the soldiers are going to get paid for the weekend. Uh, but anyway, here's uh, Dick Durbin talking about that with George Stephanopoulos on this week with George Stephanopoulos on ABC on Sunday here. In charge of his own government right now. I think he's in charge, but, you know, Chuck, you can't have an agreement at 2 o'clock and then a 4 o'clock phone call saying it's all off. And that's what happened this last Friday. Chuck Schumer went down there in good faith and made what I considered a significant concession to this president for this quixotic quest he has for this wall uh, on the border of our, our country with Mexico. And despite that effort, two hours later, the president's people called back and said it's over. Finally, we have a new tweet from the president uh, this morning, just out of, about in the last hour. Great to see how Republicans are fighting for our military and safety at the border. The Dems just want illegal immigrants to pour into our nation unchecked. If stalemate continues, Republicans should go to 51 percent nuclear option and vote on real long-term budget, no CRs. Your response? My response is this. Uh, when it comes down to it, Senator Claire McCaskill uh, offered a unanimous consent request so that there would be no interruption, none whatsoever, in the payment of the men and women in the military and service to our country. Senator McConnell, the Republican Senate leader, objected. Now, that's a matter of record. So we don't want to in any way diminish our commitment to our troops start to finish. And secondly, let's get this done on a bipartisan basis. We produced a bipartisan approach uh, to many of these issues. If the president and the leaders in Congress will sit down with us, we can resolve this quickly. What about that nuclear option doing away with the filibuster? Well, I can tell you that would be the end of the Senate, as it was originally uh, devised and created going back to our founding fathers. Uh, we have to acknowledge a respect for the minority, and that is what the Senate tries to do in its composition and in its procedure. Senator Durbin, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, George. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think Dick Durbin there did give a pretty good refutation to the idea that this shutdown over the weekend was uh, hurtful to our military. It was actually just kind of a stunt by the Trump administration as a way to attack Democrats. And uh, you saw that earlier clip where Tammy Duckworth was uh, refuting it also. Uh, and even though CNN didn't show it, uh, she also called him Cadet Bone Spurs, which is, uh, that's a, a great name for Donald Trump since he was a, you know, he went to military school and he was a cadet, but then he didn't actually go into the military during Vietnam because he got all these deferments and then eventually medical deferment because of bone spurs, uh, for those who don't know. But uh, that whole idea that uh, the filibuster is, went, goes back to the founding fathers, well, you'll, if you look at this constitution, this is an ACLU constitution, but it has the U.S. constitution in there. This is one of my Patreon rewards I'll be talking about after my last clips I'm about to show. Uh, there's nothing in the Constitution about the filibuster. There is sort of minority representation because uh, the representation in the Senate is based on how much land is in your state, not how many people are. So, of course, California gets two senators and, you know, Montana, Wyoming, Alaska with uh, lots of land, but not a lot of people. They also get two senators. So, uh, that's the only minority representation that is uh, incorporated into the Senate. The procedural filibuster thing, that's something that came later. But uh, I actually think the filibuster is a good thing for various reasons, but uh, I do sort of disagree with Dick Durbin in that last point. But uh, the final clip I want to show before the bonus Sandy clip, when Sandy was uh, settling in for the show and... Uh, I was sort of listening to uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders give her news conference. That's before the show started. Uh, and that'll be the real final clip. But this is a four and a half minute clip before that from Luis Gutierrez over on ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos, where I think he makes a really good, impassioned argument that Democrats should be willing to give Donald Trump his idiotic, stupid wall. Uh, and, and I would actually say it's the impossible wall. And this sort of relates back to some of the jokes you heard from the political comedians at the beginning that uh, this kind of wall is not, you know, it's like, it's not really a wall. In some places it's going to be like uh, empty space or a stream or, uh, I mean, it's, the whole thing is kind of ridiculous. And uh, so 
cave in on that one, but not on the diversity lottery, not on family reunification, and uh, whatever. I'm uh, sort of taking too much time to show uh, what is my favorite clip, the the number one, this is my, my favorite clip of the broadcast. You can let me know what you think after we watch it together over here. $20 billion that Mexico was supposed to pay? That's exactly the point. $20 billion. A president of the United States that said Mexicans are murderers, criminals, drug dealers, and we got to build a wall. We got to get rid of them. We got to build a wall. Because the conversation has always been about, well, you know, those Democrats, they're not into border security. All right. You want to build this monument to stupidity? You want to waste and you insist upon wasting $20 billion? Then I say free to dreamers. I have, I, they've taken them hostage, George. What am I supposed to do? I asked them to sign up. I filled out forms by the thousands with them. It is my responsibility today to put them in a safe place. But George, it's really not. You know what this demonstrates to us? that it's really not about border security, right? Because the government should be open. Right? Because people like I and others in the Democratic Party, and I want to make clear, Dick Durbin offered them the money for the wall. Schumer offered the money for the wall. I wasn't the first one to come up with uh, Democrats you heard, to say you this, heard Mark but Short, I have been very clear about Congressman, it. Congressman, you heard Mark Short earlier in the program. He said uh, that that wasn't good enough, that they also needed changes in the chain migration, the lottery system. Are you willing to, to accept that in return for freeing the DACA hostages, as you put it? Here's, here's my point to you. What it reveals to us is the president of the United States has said, and he said this on numerous occasions, George, I want a wall, you get the dreamers. And now they move uh, the, the goals, right? Here's what they're saying to us, George, and we have to be very clear about it, and we are going to fight this. They want to end legal immigration to the United States. They say, let's build a wall to keep us safe. They say, let's build a wall so that our workers uh, don't have to compete with illegals that come across the but then they end legal immigration. They say the lottery system, let's say, that's legal immigration to the United States. George, what they want is the following. And listen very carefully to what they're saying. When they say chain migration, which is something, just so that you know, offensive to me to use that word, right? Because it's really about family reunification. It's about a mom bringing their children, about children bringing their moms, about a husband and a wife. Those are the visas they're going after. Let's, let, let's be absolutely clear. They want end. What does my ability to bring my brother to the United States of America, what does the ability that I have to bring my children to this country or my children to bring me have to do with border security, have to do with keeping this country safe? They want to end legal immigration. And you know what, George? We have to fight that because it's the essence of who we are as a nation. It's core to what it is to be American, to, to have an immigration policy. We would not be a, na a nation without immigrants and an immigration policy, Congressman, and we have to push back. You were at the White House with General Kelly uh, this week. Did he really say the president was uninformed on the wall? Yes. Uh, well, I had a meeting. Um, I was sitting right next to him, uh, next to Mr. Kelly, and here's what he said. He said, the president of the United States, when he was campaigning, made promises that were not fully informed. I, I, I wrote it down. I, I wrote it down. I was, it was so astonishing to me that I immediately wrote it down. He said, was not fully informed. Is that uninformed? Um, I heard the president was not fully informed. He said, I've educated the president, and the president has evolved on the issue. And when I asked General Kelly, what's a wall? He said, it could be the inhospitable terrain. It could be border patrol agents. It could be drones. That's why I'm saying, let's take it off the table. Okay. Let's take it off the table. The American public have heard this president say time and time again he wants a wall. And as repugnant as it is to me, and as idiotic as it is to me, George, this debate has to be about men and women about you, well, 800,000 young people, and I'm gonna put them first. And you I know what, it. if I have to muddy up my hands in order to do it, so that they live a clean life in this country, then let's do it. Okay, Congressman, thanks. We got your perspective thanks. right there, let's bring that. <laughs> and we did get his perspective right there, and uh, actually, uh, even though I've said Democrats caved 
uh, on the government shutdown because uh, Democrats were saying that they weren't going to open the government back up until the Dreamer DACA issue was resolved and uh, Republicans and the Trump administration said they weren't going to negotiate while the government was shut down and uh, at least to that extent the Democrats caved on that impasse uh, but if the next three weeks uh, of debate on immigration up until February 8th and you know because this was just a three-week extension and there won't be the whole children's health insurance issue anymore in three weeks so if the debate on immigration goes like Luis Gutierrez in that last clip, clip was uh, framing the debate, then Democrats, even though they caved this weekend or this morning, uh, they may actually end up winning. But uh, I don't know if that's for sure because, you know, Luis Gutierrez is a member of the House of Representatives, not the Senate. The Senate is going to debate the immigration bill according to, uh, you know, the deal that. Uh, Chuck Schumer and Dick Durbin made with uh, Mitch McConnell, the, you know, Toby the Turtle guy. Uh, yep, we're going to have uh, a fair debate for the next three weeks on immigration, and then we're going to have a vote. And uh, that's what Mitch McConnell apparently said, but uh, it doesn't really uh, guarantee that the House of Representatives, where Luis Gutierrez is a, is a member, is actually going to vote or uh, pass whatever the Senate passes. So, in that way, the Democrats could still lose in three weeks, and but then will the government be, will the uh, Trump shutdown continue in three weeks? That's kind of why I titled the video "Trump shutdown ends?" question mark because it might just be a delay to the Trump shutdown that takes place in three weeks. Um, oh, that's sorry about that. Uh, but that's something you can let me know what you think about down in the comment section. Uh, I did promise a bonus Sandy clip. Uh, and this is uh, when Sandy was lying down at the beginning of the show. She's right over there now. But uh, before I even connected up the laptop, you can see the laptop right next to Sandy over in the nine second clip over here. Ready for the show? Ready for the show? Oh, I guess I had that looping. But like I said, you can. Hear uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders on uh, the TV that I was kind of listening to as to the Trump administration position. And I guess we'll find out more as to how this whole immigration issue resolves in the next few weeks. And we may be right back at another Trump shutdown on February 8th. But you can let me know what you think down in the comment section. I really appreciate the live viewers who showed up and my uh, super chat contributors from uh, Denmark and Sweden and uh, like I said, uh, especially the Patreon patrons who contribute every month, there's a link down to my Patreon page down in the video description. Uh, as I said earlier, I was looking back on my 2017 contributions and uh, my revenue from YouTube, and basically sometime during 2018, I think I need to either double the amount I get from Patreon patrons, or there has to be a real... Uh, revival in YouTube ad revenue just to make it so I'm making minimum wage for the amount of time I put into my YouTube channel and otherwise I don't know I guess we'll see what happens but I definitely want to cover the news in 2018 it could be a good year for Democrats uh, but if you want to help me out uh, making this a financially feasible use of my time every Sunday for the last 248 Sundays although there have been a few weeks like this week where I had to wait till Monday because of other commitments. Uh, that may happen next Sunday when I have another ACLU event, although hopefully uh, it will only delay my show till uh, late on Sunday, not actually till Monday. But it was fortuitous this week because it gave us a lot more insight into what was happening with the Trump shutdown or the Schumer shutdown or whatever you want to call that shutdown over the weekend that may have ended or may be delayed for a few weeks as we talk more about this important immigration issue. But anyway, I really appreciate the 160 or so of, the, of you who showed up at the uh, strange time for my Liberal Viewer Sunday live clip roundup delayed till Monday. And uh, I appreciate those of you who watch the recorded show and who uh, support me on YouTube just with a thumbs up down there or giving me supportive comments and 
uh, I guess uh, in, unless I have some reason to make some video during this week, which is another really busy week with other commitments, so it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. But uh, then next week, late Sunday or early Monday, I will be back with Liberal Viewer Sunday live clip roundup number 249. 249 weeks in a row, and I, I guess we're a couple months away from uh, another uh, anniversary, but uh, until then and until next week, I guess I will be seeing all of you around the internet.